Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be planting up a bunch of containers. It actually started out fairly cool. I'm still in a vest, which is crazy for the end of May, but it just, it feels so wonderful out here. I'm excited about the window boxes we're gonna tackle with shade loving plants. Then we're gonna plant out two containers that are in a little bit more sun, kind of in our Versailles garden area. And then I'm hoping to head out to the cut flower garden to plant up the big square black containers we have at the entry out there. So we have a total of four six foot window boxes, four four foot window boxes, and one three foot window box. And every single year that I plant them, they never match. I never plan correctly and I never have enough of any you know, combination of plants to make it all the way around the base of our house, which usually it works out because like the kitchen window box sits a little higher. Let me show you. So this one sits a little higher. So typically I'll do this with something different than I do in these window boxes over here. And then as you move around the house, I would do the two window boxes underneath our balcony different. And then the ones on the other side, something completely different from everything else anyway. This year I'm doing them all the same and I'm so excited for the cohesiveness that that's gonna bring to this area. Mm, and the plants are good, you guys. I laid one out already, it's not planted. But I had fun just setting the plants out, trying to decide what I wanted to do. So this is what we landed on. And of course it'll look different when these plants aren't tipped. You know, they look a little bit better when they're sitting upright. But we are using a mixture of Pegasus begonia these big gorgeous begonias, which I have put in these window boxes before with other plants and they do really well. We've got Albrito coleus, which in a shadier location will stay on the smaller side. They're a part of the Color Blaze series, which they can handle either sun or shade. In shadier conditions, I find that this one in particular takes on a little bit more of a coral color. In sunnier conditions, it's a little bit more red and it gets a lot bigger. It also, it requires less water when it's in shade, of course. Um, I noticed that when I put color blaze out in the sun, it can handle it, which is amazing for a coleus, but it does require supplemental water. Like it gets our drip water, a drip irrigation along with everything else, but I usually have to go out with a hose and water it extra, which that's a little bit of a pain. But then we've got the Double Delight Blush Rose Begonias. Oh, these are so gorgeous i love them so much and i think the color in the albrito especially once that coral color kind of starts appearing a little bit more i think it's going to be such a beautiful look and then we've got this sweet caroline medusa green sweet potato vine which i don't normally go toward this shape of leaf in a container but i'm dealing with so much more bold texture here like this is bold this is bold this will i mean be kind of a mass and it's got a little bit bigger of a leaf so i wanted something that would bring a different texture and i think it's so pretty Ugh. and then on the sides i'm actually going to tuck a couple dichondra silver falls and i may tuck a few in here i don't know i don't think i'll have room but I do like that soft blue accent just kind of spilling from the side right there. So I've got flats of plants. Last night I just kind of scattered things around, tried to kind of uh, distribute so I didn't have to do that today, but let's put another one of these in here. This one will go. Oh. That's so pretty. So that is gonna be the project of the morning. Clearly we have cleared these out. The kitchen window box had some spring stuff in it. It had some Ogon Acarus, which we actually potted, put it back in the greenhouse until I have a chance to plant it out, as well as a few Hookera uh, that have been potted and put in the greenhouse as well. And they all look really good. Um, the other things in there were pansies and primrose, which they had kind of fizzled. So those went out to the pile, but it is nice to use perennials every once in a while in pots like that, that you can then reuse later out in the landscape. But let's take a look real quick at all the window boxes we have to plant. So this way we've got that one. This one, they're both six footers. Here's two of our four footers. And I think we'll see how it fits, but I think I might do three Pegasus and two Coleus. And then around this side, we have two six footers. And then alongside the south side of our house, but it still gets shade because of the overhang, we've got two three footers and, or two four footers rather, and one three footer right there. And this is the side of the house that we've got, we've got a basket with toys and there's like sidewalk chalk and croquet things hanging out. I bought this wicker tote basket thing thinking, oh, this is perfect. All the toys will be, you know, picked up because there's a place to put them. Yeah. All right, so I think we're just gonna get started, get these all planted. I think they're gonna be so gorgeous. Ah, here we go.
I love how these turned out. I do want to walk you through the second one and um, show you just how I plant everything now that I know exactly how I want them placed. I never really know until I actually put them in the soil if it's how it's going to end up. Uh, but I'm very excited to see these grow and fill in just a little bit. Again, like I mentioned with the coleus, this being a shade arrangement, it won't put on tremendous amounts of growth like our sun containers will, but the coleus, I'm hoping to keep it about right in here. And I say hoping because I always say I'm gonna pinch my plants and keep the growth in check, but I don't always do that. I wanna keep them about this high so we can still see out the kitchen window really you know, clearly to the garden. Uh, but I think seeing that bulk of color will be awesome because those are actually the plants meant to be the centerpiece plant, the bigger of the plants in the back. And the Pegasus begonias, that's what's our big plant right now. Uh, and then we'll see what happens with the sweet potato vine. This being my first time growing it, we'll see if it's gonna want to bulk up and really trail or if it'll stay a little bit more compact, which I honestly wouldn't mind. I kind of like having a clean look every once in a while, not having a bunch of things trailing down the sides. So next window box, our six footer. I am gonna start with the coleus first because I know I want one of those in the center. Look at this one. Isn't that awesome? Take a close look at that color. This one's looking a little bit like, oh, trying to keep up. We're gonna place those and then get these in. And then we'll do the begonias next. Soil feels good. I watered all of these when they were sitting in the window bas baskets. So the soil's nice and pre-moistened, which I don't always do. And then this one. I had this variety paired with Newly Noir, Lime Time, the Sun Patience White, and some black petunias and Dichondra Silver Falls, and a Plectranthus, a variegated Plectranthus last year, and it was beautiful. It ended up being one of my favorite container arrangements. I think I even highlighted it in like a container recipe to try. Okay, coleus are in. And we've already added fertilizer into the soil. I don't think I mentioned that. So we did clean out what was in here, it left a little bit of soil, topped it up with fresh and put some uh, fertilizer in it as well. So it's all charged up and ready to go this season. Okay, begonias are next. And I have a feeling I'm gonna just remove some of this soil. I wanna make sure that it stays below the lip because watering window baskets and having it sub over the sides can be a huge mess. These don't really need to be roughed up. Most of them won't need that. Okay. Let's do this one next. And it goes, boy, that's a full one. My word. I know sometimes when we do sped up videos, it looks like I'm not packing in soil around the root balls, but I always make sure that there's no air pockets around any root balls. Hmm, can't figure out what the back of this plant is. There we go, I think that's good. Maybe. Okay, now I'm just gonna start from one side and work my way to the other side. And I don't know if this is a weird choice, just popping two dichondra in on either end, but I kind of love it. It looks, looks kind of fun. And it's just meant to be a tiny little accent right there. I think I picked out the very best begonias we had when I was laying this one out last night. Oh, uh, these say fold apart sun on the tag. No way. They would burn in our sun so fast. These look way too delicate to take full sun, right? Do any of you guys grow these? Uh, oh, that is such perfection right there. I can't even stand it. I'm gonna squeeze the root ball a little bit, a little break on the end. So we can slide it in like that. Perfect. How have I not planted these before? They're not new, are they? I don't think so. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I 
think I meant to have three on either side of this. I gotta make sure, I think I could spread these out a little tiny bit more. Hold on, let me look. So this is meant to be here. I thought I was getting a little bit too crunched up there. There we go. So that means this one can slide over a bit. It means that one can slide over just a tiny bit. That's kind of perfect, isn't it? I just want to make sure to lift the plants up and push down any root ball or any loose soil that might be right against the edge. I'll come along and clean them too. But that way we make sure to maintain that, that lip for ease of watering. Gosh, that is just so beautiful. I just love it. And you could do fewer plants, you know, than this. <laughs> Aaron's laughing. You could do fewer plants than this, um, like maybe even half the amount of sweet potato vine and begonias if you wanted to do that and just give them room to grow. Um, in shadier locations, I tend, well, I like to pack out planters anyway, but in shadier locations, I do more just because they typically are smaller plants and stay smaller because of the light. Um, these will not need to be watered all that often. Uh, and usually like you might think a sweet potato vine and a begonia wouldn't like to be planted together because they typically like different water. But again, in the shade, all of these things that typically need a ton of water out in a sunny spot in your landscape just don't require as much. So we should be good and we'll probably go maybe three days between watering on these. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna keep going, same combination all the way around. guys, I wanted to stop real quick and give you an update on how things are going up here. I can't clean the ground with the blower at the moment because Samantha's napping and I don't want to make too much noise, but I'm really loving the window boxes and I did the two pots by our balcony door as well. Starting with this side, so the two four footers and two six footers, there's just so something so pleasing about having the cohesion here using the same beautiful plants. I just love it. So in the four footers, I ended up only using two of the begonias and one of the coleus that ended up being perfect. And then four of the pink begonias and three of the sweet potato vine and two of the dichondra. As opposed to, you know, in the bigger ones, I used four of the pegasus and three of the coleus for our centerpiece. I just love seeing these beautiful window boxes and how everything's filling in over here. Just, oh, love it. Okay, rounding the corner. Oh, same plants in both actually. So in these round containers, I actually love how they turned out. So see the ground. I'll use the blower once, once Samantha's awake. I did not use the sweet potato vine or the Pegasus begonia. And honestly, I don't even miss them in this arrangement. I think that this might even look softer. I don't know, it just looks really pretty. I didn't want it to be identical. That's why I think leaving the green element out with the sweet potato vine really makes this one different and using more of the blue but I used three of the Albrito in the center and they'll just kind of grow around this. I'm gonna leave the trellis in here. Four of the pink begonias, I actually had eight left when I was done with the window boxes. I was waiting to do these containers because I didn't know if I'd have any of these left. So it worked out perfect. So four of those and four of the dichondra. There's that one. And then rounding this corner, we have cheddar in a chair. 
and then we've got the other two four foot window boxes and the three footer. So this one I used two Pegasus, one Coleus, and then three begonias, two sweet potato vine. I'm gonna have to do a little cleanup. So there's actually three more containers I wanna tackle right here in this area before we move out to the cut flower garden and do those two. This being one of them. I don't know if you guys remember this container, but I picked it up for $50 at a consignment shop. It's heavy, galvanized metal. Uh, we drilled several drainage holes in the bottom and then just filled it up with soil. It's got some really cool handles. I like the X detail and I'm just gonna fill it up with a whole bunch of different types of coleus. So we've got Newly Noir, we've got Wicked Witch, El Brito, draw a little bit of the interest from the window box over, Lime Time, Cherry Brandy, and then a brand new one for next year called Cherry Drop. In fact, this is in one of those compostable containers. I'm gonna take it out of the container. I just feel like we're too dry here um, to leave it in there. I think in more moist climates, these would compost quicker, but I think the whole goal, or I guess like the, the thing for me that I like about these pots, even though I can't put the whole pot down in the ground, which is kind of one of the things that you, know, you, can, you can try doing, you can pull the tabs on the side right there and pop it in the ground. Um, and even though I'm not gonna do that, the fact that these composts that you put right in your compost pile is so nice. So it's really fun to see that. Anyway, I think this one trails and it's got some really pretty color. Now, the only coleus that I have that I did not put in this mix was the Golden Dreams because it's got a little bit more of a warm color palette, I guess, like the yellow clashes with the yellow of this. This has got a more cool look. Golden Dreams, which I love, has a lot more of like this which is okay in small amounts, but with the rest of this, I feel like having more cool is good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some sweet potato vine in here as well. It's just gonna be all foliage and it's gonna be gorgeous. This one's Black Hawk in one of the compostable pots. And then the other two containers, I'm also using some other brand new annuals for 2024. There's a Super Tunia Bermuda Beach Improved, yes. Which means when they do this, so look at this plant, look at how gorgeous. Bermuda Beach is a, a beautiful, beautifully colored supertunia. But they, like the vigor of the plant hasn't held up to some other supertunias when I've tried it in the past. So typically when they come out with an improved version, it's got better vigor, better bloom coverage, just better performance overall. So I was so happy. I didn't even know they were improving this variety. So happy to see this one. Um, so I'm gonna use it up here with a super bells. You guys are gonna love this color. It's called Double Vintage Coral. Look at that color. Oh my goodness, that antique vibe and the fact that it's a double, yes. Paired with the Supertunia Bermuda Beach, beautiful. I'm using a Stratosphere White Gara as a centerpiece. We did that last year in front of the vegetable garden and I loved it. So that's what these two containers are gonna be filled with. So let's get these planted. We'll take a look and then we're gonna head out. It got warm, my goodness, 50 degrees to 80 degrees today. Here's the coleus slash sweet potato vine container. I think it's gonna be gorgeous. This container, oh, I don't even know if it gets any sun back in here. There's a couple of Japanese maples uh, that flank it. You know, we planted these in the containers last year and this is where they sat all winter long. And didn't they come back beautifully? We kept them on an every like two to three week watering schedule. This one's in a terracotta pot. And this one back here is in a black clay pot. That's what they call it. It's kind of like just a well, clay pot. And then right back in here, we have our bird seed. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how this one grows and fills in. I mean, these color blaze, they grow big, not quite as big when they're in the shade, again. Uh, but the sweet potato vine should start cascading over the side. We had some in this area last year and it did really well. And I tried to do my best to kind of break up the dark and light colors. Like this one here, the cherry drop and the El Brito have somewhat of similar coloring. Um, this potato vine with the dark colored coleus here 
wanted to break that up and then of course the two limey colored ones but it's, i think it's going to be just so pretty and peaceful to look at and i love these two containers as well they just look very simple uh but very bright i think that bermuda beach looks really good with the pink color that's in the begonias back there so we're not fighting i always kind of struggle with that every year uh, like sometimes i'll put stuff in the window boxes that doesn't quite match the color tones that i put out here so it's just it's working this year i'm loving it and that's what happens when you put a little bit of thought behind the plants you want you want to put in these containers i don't always do that this one looks especially pretty backed by all that gorgeous columbine oh uh, I love this area. This columbine was in this flower bed when we moved in, but it was very contained. Like it was just in a little patch right back in here. And I just let it roll. I just let it take over this space. I love that with some perennials in some areas. I love just to have a huge big section of it. It just looks soft and a little bit natural. And we've got so much, you know, formal and sharp lines in this area that a little bit of fluff and just the juxtaposition of the two things I think is a really, nice thing to see i am so happy with all the progress on the containers today oh so much getting done two containers left full sun out in the cut flower garden like full sun all day these right here get a good block of morning sun but then as you can see they get protection toward the latter part of the afternoon and evening here we are we've had these containers for ages some of you might remember when these were at the front of our property right over there by the mulberry tree before we bought the land right here that used to be a pasture. I just love the scale of them. I think they're perfect for this space, the obelisks. I love the vertical element that that brings. I'm gonna leave those in there. And there are four other entry points into the cut flower garden, but this is kind of the formal one, you know, that looks straight down at the flower shed down there. Oh, the grass is just coming in and everything's looking good. You might see the strings on the ground. Aaron ran a bunch of strings because we're getting ready to edge. The grass is actually supposed to come all the way over <laughs> to the string um, so we're going to cut in and kind of make a nice uh, deep edge right there so that we know where to let the grass grow we planted this last year but my flowers were so close to the grass they flopped over the edge and they blocked the sprinkler water and the grass didn't come up super even so we're fixing that we've got some gorgeous plants to use these are going to be our centerpiece so these are the sweet caroline upside key lime these are a climbing sweet potato vine. Perfect for the obelisk. We've got Superbina Imperial Blue. This is probably, along with the Sparkling Amethyst, two of my very favorite varieties of Superbina. They are just big time performers. We also have the Violet Ice. I kind of like the three colors here. The deeper purple, lavender, and then you've got the lavender and white. And then we're gonna bring a big pop with these right here. So this is the Supertunia Raspberry Rush love love that i like the little white striping in there because it's kind of like on the margin as well as going down the petals it just gives it kind of a glow and then we've got a new introduction for 2024 right here this is saffron finch supertunia it is gorgeous it kind of reminds me of the limoncello in a way it's so nice to have a few yellow options in the supertunia line the breeze is starting to pick up Anyway, there's the mini Vista yellow, which we trialed last year and it did just so, so well. And I've got a few of those, but this one has a larger flower. So I'm very excited to try it. And I don't really know how many of each one of these I'm gonna put in the containers. We're just gonna start in and go for it. And there we have it. It is so pretty. Oh, I'm kind of thinking that this is gonna climb up a bit, but it also is gonna probably make its way through and we might see a little bit of it spill out. I was noticing in the container, you can see what it's doing right here. See how it's climbing up this stick, up this stake right here. It's doing that on its own. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It might be one of those situations where I need to tie a little bit of extra string around the obelisk to give the sweet potato vine something extra to, cl to uh, cling to, but it may just be fine just with the way the obelisk is right now. It might make its way up. The Black Eyed Susan vines sure do. They make their way all the way to the tippy top of these obelisks. And we've got quite a few annuals in here, I'm not gonna lie. Um, big performing annuals as well, but these are huge containers. So long as they get lots of sun and lots of food, you know, we fertilize on a weekly basis. It will be fun to see, especially like I hope 
that this one has like a little bit more vigor than limoncello so that it can compete with these two but it'll be an interesting experiment and walk over here this one looks just the same but at least you get to see the starting point whoops i didn't get that one there we go fully tucked in such a pleasing blend of color though i really like it we do have some blooms out here in the rose garden so fun on this like little itty bitty rose of distant drums isn't that beautiful this one is louise odier i don't know how to say it but it's absolutely beautiful look at this tiny little shrub and all of the blooms it's already producing and this one i had to cut back quite a lot because it got um, a little nipped in a late frost that we had maybe it helped it i don't know they're all looking really nice james galway Ah. Oh gorgeous this one is is a uh, ja adore j adore <laughs> really pretty soft pink cream look at the midnight blue royal swan this one is south park which these blooms are aged when they very first came out they had like a cocoa kind of orange uh, orange smoky orange in the center so pretty and this one is a mansfield pink so much fun anyway guys that is it for today so many containers done we still have quite a number of containers and in-ground annual plantings to do but i think we are fixing to be done by the end of may maybe i don't know kind of feels like we're cruising but we'll see how it goes hope you guys enjoyed today's video and we will see you in the next one bye